I did a video about this a couple months back, but it needs to be mentioned again because it's a example of the consistent 2,000 year history of the Talmudic Jewish lobby opposing and hating on free speech, long before the Mohammedans began their custom of violently trying to oppose free speech. And the Talmudic Jewish lobby, the only thing that has changed in their tactics is just that. Instead of trying to murder those they disagree with, like in the uh, in the book of Acts with the Apostles, they now try to use legal ways. And especially on college campuses, the Talmudic Jewish lobby poses a major danger to freedom of speech and those who would criticize the Judeo-Satanist tactics and Judeo-Satanist false religion. So here's an example of that. I've shown it in the video, another video a couple months back, but here it is again. This is on the Jewish Daily Forward. It says, Jewish college students are more likely to oppose free speech and that should scare us. Yep, it absolutely should. It says in the article, one of the hallmarks of Jewish tradition is its intense focus on debate and disagreement. Unfortunately, it appears that this value is being lost on many of the nation's younger Jews, namely those currently enrolled in colleges and universities. A just released survey from the Foundation for Individual Rights and in Education captures the voices of over 37,000 students at 159 colleges and provides empirical insight into the current state of speech and expression on campus today the picture is not good the data show that one third of all students think that trying to disrupt or shut down speakers when they visit campuses is sometimes or always acceptable so among jewish students surveyed 40 percent report a feeling this way as for blocking other students from attending a campus speech and hearing potentially controversial ideas 13 percent of students and 18 percent of jewish students think it is sometimes or always acceptable. Two thirds of Jewish students compared to just about half of students nationally answered that blocking other students from attending a campus speech is justifiable. Sounds kind of like the Nazis or the communists. Well, nothing has changed really. You know, they're, they're talking about Jewish lobby is no different. It says in the article, continuing on, the data suggests that, do, that Jewish students are more open to the idea of shutting down speech than the uh, dissemination of ideas than other college students. How, do we, how are we to understand these troubling findings? Political identity is a good place to start. Like American Jews, overall Jewish college students tend to be Democrats. The data shows that 54% of Jewish students surveyed identify as Democrat, compared to 35% of students surveyed overall. When you include self-identifying independent who lean Democratic, 67% of, of Jewish college students fall into the Democratic a column compared to a lower national figure of 55%. In this survey, identifying as a Democrat strongly correlates with espousing anti-free speech positions. The data shows that 81% of Democratic identifying Jewish students believe that there are cases when shutting down speakers is acceptable, compared to a much lower 59% of Jewish political independents and leaners of just and just 44% of Republicans. Yeah, it's just them keeping it with their 2000 year tradition. Uh, mimicking the Nazi, Nazi type of censorship of freedom of speech. Continuing on the article, most troublingly, 27% uh, of Democratic students surveyed responded that it is acceptable to use violence to stop a campus speech, hmm, kind of like the Nazis and the communists. Although a number is, or though the number is 22% for Jewish independents and leaners of seven and 17% for Jewish Republicans, this data is deeply unsettling for me as a professor who has watched uh, college, college, sorry, collegiate life change dramatically over the past two decades. One of the great values of the American collegiate experience is that students have a chance to engage deeply with, dif with differing opinions. To this day, I am grateful for the uh, Colonel Kapa, I'm not good at reading on a computer, a people, traditions, views, and cultures that I was able to engage with two decades ago uh, when I, then a fairly conservative Jewish teenager, left the East Coast to attend Stanford University. I would be lying if I said that there are no evenings in college when I felt hurt, misunderstood, shocked, and angry, when my ideas were challenged and came into conflict with others, but there were far more nights during which I was able to connect, learn, and grow in ways unimaginable to me in high school. I certainly recall the frustrations and agony of being challenged, but I remember more powerfully the ecstasy of having my mind open to new ideas, challenging my opinions when I heard someone or something new. Yeah, that's how you deal with your opponents. Instead of shutting them down, you let them speak. You challenge their ideas. But you see, the Talmudic Jewish lobby is no different than the Nazis or the communists. They want to violently shut down those they disagree with, keeping with their 2,000-year tradition of doing so. You see, again, the only thing that has changed is their tactics. See, the Judeo-Satanist lobby has always tried to murder those they disagree with. Now, because they can't really get away with that without certain repercussions, they now have to use legal ways or just try to use general Antifa type tactics. It's it's not shocking whatsoever when you read the book of Acts and the tactics used to try to shut down freedom of speech. The Talmudic Jewish lobby, the Judeo-Satanist lobby, has always been the biggest enemy of freedom of speech next to the Jesuit Pope in Rome and his Jesuit papacy. 
So I wanted to point that out. Don't be deceived by a false religion of Judaism or the blasphemous Talmud. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.